This tutorial is uh, intended to give you some preliminary information about uh, how to play uh, the Gearbox game, uh, uh, which is the game that uh, we will play during this week on Wednesday and on Friday. So you are strongly encouraged to pay attention to this information because they will be useful to play the game uh, during uh, next week. I will just give you some preliminary information about the case, the Mozzini case, uh, then the platform on which you will play the game, and then on I will uh, organize uh, the uh, two rounds and uh, uh, what I expect you uh, to, to deliver after the game has been played. Um, let's start with the case. The case, uh, again, you have the text uploaded, uh, is the Gearbox game, so uh, we are talking about the supply chain of the Gearbox production, which is a component of, uh, uh, of, uh, of cars, and uh, we deal with the supply chain before the uh, car producer, the car manufacturer. So you will see that uh, we, um, we will have all the stages uh, before uh, uh, the actual car producer uh, will ask for, uh, for uh, the gearbox uh, uh, delivery. In particular, uh, we include uh, uh, four phases that start from raw materials to the um, realization of the final product and in particular you see the stages uh, uh, listed, uh, um, listed here. So you fir we first have the foundry which obtains uh, as cast boxes from raw materials, so the aluminium. Then we have the barrer which are the boxes uh, where the boxes are refined by eliminating the excess metal. Then we have the metal worker where boxes are far machine to obtain the final shape and then we have the customer <coughs> who performs the final assembly and delivers to the market. Deliver to the market means uh, deliver to car manufacturer like Chevrolet. So we cover the whole supply chain of gearbox in, in the game and of course uh, uh, each group, uh, we will talk about this later, will represent a supply chain so we'll cover all these, uh, uh, all these nodes. This is how the supply chain looks like in, uh, uh, in the game, but also in, in reality. So uh, here are the nodes, so the customer, the meta worker, the borrower and the foundry. And uh, the arrows, uh, um, these arrows represent the flow and uh, this arrow instead represents the order flow. So uh, here is how the product is brought to the final customer and here is how the supply chain actor communicates between, uh, communicate between each other through, through orders. Of course, uh, uh, the only one seeing uh, two actors uh, inbound and outbound are, are the barrer and the metal worker. So the barrer as uh, um, the foundry as supplier and the metal worker as customer and the metal worker as barrer as uh, a supplier and the customer, the final customer as a customer. Uh, so of course uh, in the game uh, the barrer and the metal worker would be uh, the most complex node to, the, to be played but not so much. Uh, in particular, uh, um, uh, the, the flows are, uh, um, are modelized in the game like this. So uh, every time you issue an order, independently from the note, uh, uh, this will take one day for transmission. So if today you issue an order to your supplier, your supplier will be this order the day after uh, your your the, the period after you transmit the demand so you put it today and then in the next round the supplier you will see this order coming as incoming demand well instead in order to satisfy uh, every time you satisfy an order um, uh, it is needed two days are needed so if you ask for 10 units in order to get these units delivered to the final customer you will need two rounds so a first day of transportation and the second day of, of uh, transportation. This is, I mean, how the, the supply chain looks like uh, in the game. So uh, on each, each node can issue order and every time an order is issued, it takes just one, one period to be, to be transmitted. While instead, uh, in order to satisfy an order, you need two periods. So it means that uh, you need uh, one day to uh, transport and the second day to uh, finalize transportation to, uh, to, to the stock. So this is how the flow looks like in your, in your supply chain. 
In particular, then, of course, uh, uh, you need to pay uh, attention to the fact that uh, uh, managing the flow uh, has cost. And in particular, your supply chain has uh, a very simple cost, uh, uh, a very simple cost structure, which is uh, identical at every stage of the supply chain. So, as for every node of the supply chain, uh, um, the one period to issue an order and a two period to satisfy an order is the same. Also, the cost structure is the same for every node of, of the supply chain. In particular, <clears throat> you will see that you have inventory, and so uh, for each unit that you have in inventory, uh, this will cost to you uh, five dollars per five euros per unit. While instead, wherever you are not able to satisfy the demand, so the final demand, um, you will experience a backlog, and each unit of backlog it's, is uh, evaluated at uh, 10 euros per unit. Uh, for I mean, for simplicity purposes, uh, you don't have transportation cost and you don't have order cost. So issue uh, issuing orders and transporting units. Uh, um, does not do, don't contribute to uh, increase your supply chain cost. Of course, uh, when playing the game, uh, you will see that we will have two rounds, but in both rounds, uh, uh, the, 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 the objective is, of course, uh, minimize the total sum, the, the sum of uh, total costs, of supply, supply chain costs, which means uh, minimize your own inventory and minimize your own backlog. Of course, I mean, these are in trade-off, you need to figure out how to manage the, the trade-off in order to minimize the supply chain cost for for, uh, for for your node and for your supply chain. The only levers that you add is uh, how you decide to manage uh, order issue to your suppliers. So you will see that the only decision variables that you have in, uh, uh, in the game is uh, what to order to your supplier every period. So according to how you manage order to your supplier and how you transmit order to your supplier, you need to 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 to, uh, to figure out uh, which is the best strategy in order to minimize uh, uh, total inventory and total backlog. Uh, let's see. Let's have a quick overview of uh, uh, how um, you will play the game and uh, which are the characteristics of the platform. Uh, this is how the supply chain looks like in the game. So these are the four nodes: so foundry, borrower, metal worker, and customer. Uh, this will be your team, and here you will see uh, the day, uh, the day in which uh, um, in which the simulation um, takes place, and it, it, it will pro it will progress during during the game. Um, here you will see also what we call the record sheet. So every time you take a decision uh, below the, the supply chain, uh, you will see the data, uh, the cumulative data in each round. So um, uh, these are the round one, round, round one, period one, period two, period three, period four, and so on. And uh, according to your decision, uh, which is here, so each, in each period you have to decide how much to order to, 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 from, from your supplier, um, each line uh, will be populated in the record sheet. Uh, and in particular, you will find initial inventory, demand, total demand, received materials, total availability, production, order, final inventor, and backlog. And here you will see the total cost of your, of your supply chain. This is, uh, I mean, the, the, the screenshot from uh, from uh, uh, from the platform. So uh, here you see, here you see the initial stock. Uh, here you see um, uh, you see the um, you see the the the. the the materials coming from uh, from uh, from the previous stage. Uh, here you see the demand, and for each period, so you see here the blue uh, square are orders, uh, the uh, yellow square are materials, and for each period uh, you need to decide how much to order to your uh, to your to your supplier. So this is how the supply chain looks like in the game. Of course, uh, you will see that uh, in the two round you will play two rounds and. And uh, uh, in the first round, uh, the information that you will see and you, that will be displayed here will be different from the information that uh, will be displayed uh, in, in the second round. 
in particular, this is the algorithm. Um, I mean, here you, you, we can go through the formulas, uh, um, but now I will show in detail how different values are, are calculated. But, but uh, uh, you will see the order entry, which is the demand that you will experience in, in the current period, which is the incoming blue box. The material entry, uh, which is uh, the incoming uh, yellow box in your notes, uh, uh, and uh, which will determine your total availability because uh, the material entry, so the received material, uh, will be summed up to the initial inventory and this will, uh, this will determine your total availability in the period. Uh, product transportation, again, from the first to the second yellow box, uh, and it takes always two periods. Uh, and uh, each period is the production of your notes will be automatically set at the demand experienced in uh, uh, the demand experience in, uh, in in the period plus eventual backlog that you have from pre previous uh, than previous period of course uh, uh, this is limited by the fact that uh, the production uh, equals the total demand if you are sufficient availability if you don't have sufficient availability of course uh, uh, you will try to produce the most according to your availability and uh, uh, this will uh, uh, this will generate uh, backlog uh, in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, differences please mm, the, the coefficient is one one material product so if you have uh, 20 units uh, of raw material you can produce 20 product for your stage so uh, there is no um, there is no uh, proportion coefficient to be to be to, to be considered and uh, <clears throat> you don't have constraint in terms of production capacity um, then at the end uh, of each period you will have final inventory and backlog of course uh, final inventory is uh, uh, if you produce less of the total availability you have at the initial the beginning of the period uh, well instead backlog you experience backlog it, if your production uh, doesn't match uh, the total demand uh, that is issue uh, in uh, in the period uh, and what you have to decide is uh, the uh, order placement so at the end of each period you decide uh, how many units uh, you want to reorder uh, to your supplier and uh, remembering that uh, this unit will arrive two period after you place uh, you place the order let's see an example <clears throat> That's the situation. So uh, you start, and this is just the example. This is not what you will experience in, in the game, but uh, you have an initial inventory of 800. Um, you will receive uh, in this period 800 units. And for this period, uh, uh, your demand uh, is uh, 800. So the in incoming demand that you will see from the next stage or, or, or final customer is 800. <clears throat> this means that... Uh, as uh, you don't have uh, backlog uh, at, the at the beginning of this period, uh, your total demand uh, is just the demand that you experience for this period. Uh, you need to understand if you are able to satisfy this, this demand. Are you able to satisfy this demand? How, may, how much inventory do you have <clears throat> at the beginning of this period? 800. How many materials uh, you will uh, receive in this period? 800. This means that you have a total availability of uh, 1,600, uh, which means that uh, you are perfectly available to produce what is asked by the, mask, the, by the market. So, as you have <clears throat> 106,000, 106, uh, 1, you will produce 800, which is uh, the demand for the period, uh, and you don't have any backlog, so you are exactly able to produce what is what is uh, asked by the, the, the next stage, and your final inventory will be of course uh, uh, 800 because uh, you use uh, 800 unit to produce the demand of of the period. Let's imagine that for this period you decide to order zero, so you don't you don't issue any order to to your to your to your suppliers. Period two. Uh, now, uh, first of all, period two, uh, you inherit uh, the final inventory of the previous period. So, if the final inventory was 800, the initial inventory of period two is 800. Let's imagine that uh, <clears throat> your demand uh, at the beginning of this period uh, is 800. So, you experience in this case a demand, and, uh, a demand of 800. And you receive 800 uh, units of materials. This means that uh, uh, this means that uh, your total availability is uh, 
1,600 and your total demand to be satisfied is 800 because uh, you did not inherit any backlog from uh, the, previous, uh, uh, the previous period. This means that uh, you can produce exactly what is uh, asked from, from the market, so the total demand, uh, and uh, uh, you will have a final inventory of 800. For this period, you decide that uh, you issue an order to your suppliers of 800, uh, 800 units. What happens in the period 3? In the period 3, it happens that uh, the demand that you have coming from uh, uh, um, that you have uh, coming from the uh, final market uh, from from the next stage is uh, 1,600, and in this period, you receive uh, 800 units uh, uh, in in in. Um, in, in coming. Uh, you inherit uh, from the previous period a final inventory of 800, uh, which is your initial inventory. This means that uh, your total availability is the initial inventory plus received materials, meaning uh, 1,600. As your total demand is 1,600 and you have an availability of 1,600 in inventory, you can produce exactly what the market is asking for. So you will produce use uh, 1,600 units uh, and you decide to order 800 units. Of course, in this case, you don't have backlog, but uh, you have no more inventory left because you have consumed everything you had uh, by producing 1,600 units. Then, for period, in the for period, you have uh, a demand, like an incoming demand of, eight, uh, uh, of 800 you have an initial inventory of zero. This means that, uh, uh, and you have no backlog inherited from uh, the previous period. So it means that the total demand to be satisfied is, is, is uh, 800. However, if you remember, in period one, you issue an order of zero to your supplier. So you don't ask for any, any uh, product. Uh, this means that at period 4, so two period after period 1, uh, you will receive the order that you have issued in the first period. But as you issue zero order, so zero units in the order, in period 4, you, uh, you will have uh, no more, no incoming units uh, to your node. This means that your initial inventory is zero, the demand is 800, but you don't have any incoming materials in your nodes, it means that you don't have any availability for this period. So you are not able to produce, uh, and so you have a backlog of 800. So it means that you are not able to satisfy, um, you are not able to satisfy um, uh, the customer demand, so this is a backlog. Your final inventory is of course zero, and for this period you decide to issue an order of uh, 1,600. Let's see what's happened in period 5. In period 5 you experience again a, uh, a demand of 800, you inherit, uh, uh, you inherit uh, uh, an initial inventory which is zero from the previous period, but the total demand in this case is uh, 1,600 because it is the demand of the period plus the backlog uh, that you inherit from the previous period. Uh, in this case, the received material is 800, which is exactly what you order in period 2, which has arrived the two period after. So, one period of transportation, second period of transportation, and now you have it available in, in, your, in, your, in your inventory. This means that your total availability is 800, and you can produce 800. So, you can just satisfy, as backlog as the priority, the, the backlog that you experienced uh, in the previous period. So it means that your final inventory is zero and you still have backlog because you are not able to satisfy the demand of this period. So you satisfy, you cover the previous period backlog, but you have backlog for the demand of this period. Then, again, if you want to do something also on the sixth period, you see here that uh, uh, the demand in this period is zero, the initial inventory is zero, but you should have uh, figure out the drill. Uh, the total demand is 800 because it's zero for the current period, but uh, 800 backlog for the previous one. You receive 
800 materials, which is the order that you issued here. The total availability is 800, so you can produce 800 just to cover the previous period backlog, and your final inventory will be zero, and uh, in this period you don't have uh, any, any backlog. Uh, please note that uh, here you see the total cost of your uh, uh, of your supply chain, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the, the multiplication between uh, um, the, the stock that you have in each period multiplied by five euros and the backlog that you have in each period multiplied by uh, by uh, ten euros, and then sum up. This is how uh, how the uh, how the um, how the, um, the, the, the the game works in uh, the game works in uh, uh, in the platform. Now uh, that's how you should uh, um, that's how you should access the platform. That's the link. Uh, I will give you login and password, so each node will have uh, a specific login and uh, and password. So you log in here. And uh, uh, then you go to games, I will show you, and uh, uh, when I will make the game run, uh, you will start here in playing. So you will see here uh, which type of uh, uh, nodes you are, so the foundry, the barber, the metal worker, or, 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 or the customer. Uh, and uh, you will click play and you will start the game. That's how the game look like in the main, in the main screen, screen. So uh, that's what you will see in the first round so you don't see what happened in, in the other in the other notes uh, this will be for example in this case uh, um, uh, in this case uh, uh, you will be the uh, the um, uh, the, the final customer you see here and uh, uh, you see which is the oncoming material and uh, what you're going to to to, to produce uh, and uh, here is the amount of orders that uh, you will uh, uh, that you will um, uh, the amount of unit that will submit in your order to in this case is you are the if you are the customer uh, um, to the metal worker this is the demand uh, and uh, this is the incoming uh, this is the incoming uh, uh, materials and here you have the sum up of uh, of uh, uh, the this is the record sheet as we discussed uh, uh, before uh, please remember that the value that you see uh, that you see um, is the quantity arrived in the present day and not how much would be delivered in the next round uh, so you see here um, and here is how much uh, you you uh, you produce in each uh, uh, in each round uh, and so that you can deliver to 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 the customer uh, here you see uh, the time that you have to 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 to, to put the value and uh, uh, is two minutes so you will have two minutes uh, to understand uh, uh, how many unit uh, uh, to issue um, to your to your to the previous node uh, and there will be I still have to decide uh, but there will be uh, 20 20 rounds 20 or 24 rounds according to to how I decide to shape the the, the, the demand and the value of uh, of the game. Now let's deep dive into the organization of uh, uh, of uh, the game. Uh, so uh, what you have to do for this round, uh, for the first round. So first of all, watch the tutorial. So if you are watching the video, it means that uh, you already tick the, the first the first step. Then you have, of course, to read the case. And most importantly, you need to form groups uh, for uh, representing the, the supply chain. And I will spend some minutes in deep diving to, into this. So, uh, as I already told you, I'm not making the groups for this game. So you are free to choose and design your group. Uh, and uh, please remember that each group will represent a supply chain. Uh, I will just give you some constraint in order to make the, the, the to, to make the game uh, uh, to have the game making making sense. So each supply chain has four nodes, so it means that uh, a minimum of four players uh, needs to be present in each supply chain. You can play more than one p per person for node, but no more than three players. So uh, if you want to keep the, the small group and small group are two people or three people, you can, but no more than three people or two people uh, in, in each node. So maximum of three players in each node. And uh, 
I need a minimum of three supply chain for the game. So you can make uh, whatever choice you want, but uh, I just want a minimum of three supply chain for, for, uh, for the game. When you are ready, uh, you need to click this link uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I mean, write the, the characteristic and the composition of your supply chain in this Google, Google Doc. You are forced to do that by Tuesday, the November 28, uh, uh, 6 o'clock. Okay, so uh, we will discuss it on Monday, but uh, by Tuesday I need to have uh, the supply chain name because uh, composition because I need to, 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 configure, to configure the game. This is how you have to fill the form. So this is how the form looks like. So of course you can, uh, you can uh, write on what I already um, on what I already wrote, but uh, this is the supply chain name. You can give whatever name you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I name it one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Uh, and in each node, I want the name of, of, of the player. So of course, uh, in each node, I can have up to three different names. Okay, a minimum of one or a maximum of, of, uh, of three, but having three is not, uh, is not mandatory. And uh, at least three supply chain uh, needs, to be, uh, needs to be filled, otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise um, the game won't, uh, won't work. What happens if the form is not filled correctly by the deadline? So it might not means that, uh, uh, I mean, just, it, it's not that just one of two people or just one supply chain is not filled correctly. I don't care. So I will verify on Tuesday if the, uh, the form is correct. Uh, if the form is not correct, uh, I don't care about people that fill it correctly. I will form the group. So, um, because otherwise, uh, the, there will possibility of uh, uh, mismatching. So, uh, and I will tell you, I will make the group. So I will just make uh, uh, n number of supply chain, uh, uh, if it is feasible, uh, one player in each node randomly group. And uh, if, mm, when, I, when I allocate one player in each node, uh, someone uh, uh, is not allocated, then I will add one randomly by existing supply chain. But uh, I will make just randomly grouping uh, with no consideration about small groups or big groups. So uh, I think it's your interest to form group uh, with people that you want to work with uh, or you feel comfortable with. Uh, I give you complete freedom, apart from the fact that some game criteria need to be need to be respected. Um, what you should expect on, uh, on Wednesday? On Wednesday, I mean, this is a, a setup round because it is called, I mean, the, the important round is the second one, but the first round is what we call simulation without information. So you will have, uh, uh, you, you know your partner, uh, but uh, uh, as you can see, the game will be configured so that uh, you don't know orders, inventory, and production of any other player in the supply chain. So uh, this is called blind simulation. You just see what's happened in your note. Uh, you are not allowed to communicate with the other players and I will spread you in, in, in the classroom. And uh, the only mean of communication allowed is order and product. So just with the parameters put in, in, in the system. And uh, uh, you just have to coordinate uh, if uh, uh, you are more than one person in each node uh, to which strategy to, 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 to play uh, within, the same, within the same node. Uh, because, I mean, this is what you are supposed to do for uh, the first round. Uh, of course, read the case, watch the video, understand the platform and so on, uh, but uh, just coordinate with your node member. If you have one, to understand if possible strategy uh, can be put in place to face the simulation that can be carried on. So according to the information that you have in the case, according to the fact that uh, you cannot communicate with other members, uh, that uh, these are the information that you will have and this is the decision variables that you have, uh, just try to understand with uh, your node member um, if there are some possible strategy to be implemented in order to, to minimize the cost of your, of your node and your supply chain. It's not required that uh, you do it in advance. You can also do it during, uh, during, uh, the, uh, during the simulation. So when the simulation is going on and when, uh, uh, I mean, you are more confident with, with the game. Please, whichever strategy idea you design for this first round, uh, take track. So take notes on, uh, annotate this because it will be useful. 
Then, in the second round, instead, it will call simulation with visibility and information. I will give you uh, information of uh, how to manage and how to play the second round immediately after the, uh, the, uh, the first round on, 